Oh, hello. I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of The Gay Goods, and you are tuned into today's installment of The Gay Goodies with special guest, Mr. Captain Bo Butler. I almost said Rhett Butler because that was the joke I was going to make, and instead, I ruined it for myself. You're welcome. Uh, he's a newcomer. Everyone's already obsessed with him. Once you look at him, you'll be as perplexed as I am because, like we said in small town Texas, she means well. Let's bring him on now. <laughs> oh, that Bo was a really Butler. sweet intro. Well, you do. You mean well. <laughs> I loved it. It's like we say about uh, on Broadway about actors who uh, don't really dance. They don't move well. They mean well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'm so delighted that you are on the show and we have former guest Chris Damned to thank for it. Mm -hmm. uh, much much against his will, he put us in contact <laughs> because I think that he knew that once we found each other, he would be left out in the cold. Yeah, uh, so. Which I don't think he's wrong about, frankly. <laughs> I think that he had something there. Uh, but what I, what I had not realized until I think this past week on, you didn't ask me anything on Instagram, uh, the day after Chris did one as well, so we'll talk about that rivalry in a second. But I had not realized that you only got started in porn about half a year ago. And in the yeah. span of that time, you've become exclusive. You're everywhere. Your Twitter, your Instagram have blown up. And I really feel like you are the new gay porn starlet in town. Thank you. I, that was, I appreciate that so much because that's all I wanted. And that was the goal in sight. So... I appreciate you acknowledging that. I, yeah. What were you doing in terms of sex work before moving professionally into porn? Did you have a popular OnlyFans? Like, what was the trajectory? I mean, it just sort of it was like a um, a thought that came to me. Well, it's something I always wanted to do. You know, I I would watch porn and I would fantasize about being them. You know what I mean? Like those. That's Porn is where I learned how to have sex. I started watching porn at like 12 years old and I would like look at the way they were giving blowjobs and was like, okay, that's how I'm going to give a blowjob. Which we yeah. do not recommend viewers. We do not recommend <laughs> watching porn so early. <laughs> yeah, we don't recommend that. But it definitely shaped who, who I am. And, you know, <clears throat> I had like, I was shy for a while about whatever, for, for whatever reason. And then I just sort of decided to live authentically and um, do what I wanted to do, which, you know, Mr. Teddy Bear reached out to me on um, Instagram right after I made my Instagram. And we just sort of were chatting about OnlyFans and I decided to uh, do a video with him. And he sort of helped me shape my OnlyFans and my Twitter. Did you just turned 30 uh, earlier this month? Did that ha play into finally going for it at all? Was it kind of a, I'm going to be 30 in less than a year. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Well, I, I turned 31 a week ago. So what happened was I turned 30 last year during quarantine. And something about like the world shaking up in the way that it did put things into perspective for me about like how anything could change on a dime and I might as well do what I want to do instead of worrying about, you know, fitting into the societal molds, you know? So, yeah. And another thing, I mean, if you're not following him on his social medias, you really should because one, he's a beautiful hunk of man. And two, uh, he's very sweetly earnest in a way that I personally find disgusting, but other people seem to really go for <laughs> Uh, but recently you posted a photo and it might've been on Instagram during that, ask me anything of you, uh, passed out in your underwear by a pool holding a cocktail yeah. with a very different body. Yeah. And you said that that was the moment when you really decided to make some lifestyle changes. So what, what did that entail? Well, that entailed getting sober. Um, I hit a point when I was about 25 years old where I couldn't go a day without drinking or using drugs. And it like progressively led up to that. It wasn't like that happened right away. So, um, yeah, I just became 
a t- total hot mess. So I, I got <laughs> <laughs> like really on another level. So I, um, I went into a detox and then I just did what people told me to do to stay sober. Yeah. That was about four, four plus years ago. When quarantine hit, was that, did you struggle with that at all? Was that a really dark, I mean, as someone who also struggled with, uh, my own drinking during quarantine, I can't imagine. Yeah. Well, no. So I, um, the struggle with quarantine was that my my groups of other sober people that I would spend time with were shut off. That that was the struggle during quarantine. I've been lucky enough where I haven't felt the desire to, you know, go on a bender in like a couple in a few years. So that that isn't something that like plagues at me, but what plagues at me is when my community is broken off. And so that was the struggle of quarantine was the same queens that I see that are also recovering hot messes. We all couldn't get together regularly anymore. And and that, that definitely took a toll on me. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was rough and I, I stopped drinking uh, over Christmas. So it's been almost five months. Uh, Yeah. I was, I, it was one of those things. And I think a little bit, I think a lot of people struggled with this during quarantine as well, where I looked around, I was like, this is not the life that I want. I don't want to be hung over all the time. And I don't want to be doing the same shit that I've been doing since I was in college. Right. Right. Totally. Yeah. That, that was part of my thought process is like, I'm 25. It's not cute anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was super cute a few years ago. I was like, you know, oh, like, look at me. And now it's like, ooh. You know, so I had to do something to change that. It's that it's that moment when you realize that you thought that being drunk made you sexy and disheveled, and really yes. it just made you uh, compl- a complete idiot who stank. Oh, I thought that picture of me that I posted was like the hottest fucking picture of me ever. I was like, <laughs> I felt like I was serving <laughs> s- serving you Lindsay Lohan like bad boy like all of it. And like, I look at it now and I'm like, Whoa, you know? Yeah. So how quickly did your intense six days a week workout regimen (laughs) kick in when you started to, when you decided to get sober? A while. So I actually, I got sober. I had like totally depleted my testosterone levels and like messed my hormones up because of how much uh, stuff I was putting in my body. So I actually went on, uh, was prescribed TRT, and then I I got back into the gym and all that. Yeah, that took about a year. Yeah. But I mean, you, your body is ridiculous in a very upsetting way. Thanks. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I like a man who knows how to rest a compliment from a joke. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, but I mean, truly like you, you have a really spectacular body and you just posted your workout regimen and it is fairly intense. I mean, it's six days a week. It's very specific. How long are you spending at the gym? An hour. I don't. So that's like the boundary I set for myself is an hour. Good enough. No matter what I did, I do this. Okay. It's been an hour pat myself on the back and I, I leave the fucking gym, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if I'm on the yes. phone the whole time dicking around, I'm like just proud of myself. If I got there and was there for an hour. That's like how I have to kind of take it. Well, and you, you picked out the cute gym outfit. You made it to yeah. the gym. You showed yeah. off the cute gym outfit. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's it. Just be proud of yourself that you got there. I, I tell that to people all the time because when I first started working out, so what used to trip me up in the past is I would get a personal trainer. The personal trainer would be like, oh, you got to run three miles and oh, you got to do plyometrics and fucking crab walks. And I would burn out. I would be like, oh, I hate this. I hate you. You know, like, <laughs> but this time I decided to just do to just take the pressure off of myself to do everything right away. So the first uh, six months I worked out after I got sober, I just did, um, I just lifted. 
that's it. No cardio, no, I didn't worry about any of that because that's all I knew I could do at that time. And I was just proud of myself for getting there three days a week and doing this a few times, you know, and then it, it, it built on itself. So you started doing porn in November and Mm -hmm. then I feel like things really like it was a very quick domino effect where within a few months you were signing as an exclusive. So what was the reaction that you recall from when you started shooting professional scenes? The reaction uh, from who? Uh, From the industry, from uh, the people that you were working with. Was it just very much, please come back and do many more scenes with us? (laughs) Well, it's it's a lot more subtle than that. Um, I, I was like looking for all of this reassurance from Tony DeMarco, like, did you like that? Like, did I do well? You know, and like, it's it's such a um, it's such a professional environment. Like, there's an entire crew of people, all trying to get home in a reasonable amount of time. That it's like, all right, next, next, next. So, um, like, afterwards, talking to them, they were like, oh yeah, Tony went into the room afterwards and was like wow, that guy was amazing. I have to sign that guy, you know, but he didn't like necessarily come up to me. I came up to him and was like, did I do well? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, like, I really needed the reassurance. It's like, a, but, but yeah, so he's, I mean, he's been my, my advocate the entire time. Like, you know, without him, none of this would be possible. He, you know, pushed for me to be signed. He's casted me in so many, like every production now at this point. Um, and we're like, legitimately, we text on a regular basis. I, I consider him a friend. Uh, I worked with Tony 15 years ago, uh, oh, wow. when we were both at Michael, when we were both at Michael Lucas, I was going to ask, was it Lucas? Yeah. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, that's for offline. Uh, but he, I mean, he, he is one of the most genuinely, invested people both in terms of making of elevating gay porn and also in terms of nurturing talent he, he's a there, he's so he's so no bullshit he's so no nonsense and he is genuinely excited about doing it and i think that that comes through both in terms of the people that he advocates for and in terms of the final product oh yeah the the, the funnest time we have together is when we're doing the b-roll like we just shot this thing at the ccbc you know and half the day was like different reaction shots of me walking into the hotel and like, you know, just like he just is so the setup and like the film itself is so important to him. And, and that, that excites me, you know, that I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fun. I, I remember when, God, this is how different gay porn is. There was a premiere party for dangerous liaisons. Oh, nice. Like, I went to a premiere party for gay porn. I went to three, actually, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, Very different now. I want to go. Well, I mean, look, once everything is back open, there's no telling what is going to happen to gay porn. Everyone's going to be so goddamn excited to be out and about. Yep. It's just going to be a huge blowout of the Chateau Marmont. And then you can be Lindsay Lohan again. Yes. Yes, I actually live right by Stead's Theater, so I feel like I feel like they should put something on. Okay, so this is what we we are going to plan this together offline. Yes, we're going to figure out a porn premiere party together. We'll take care <laughs> of it. Uh, we'll make Chris cater it because he loves to cook. Perfect. And from the looks of it, he loves to cook pasta. <laughs> yeah. Bread. Uh, but <laughs> now having just all carbs. <laughs> uh, but now that you've been doing it for a while, what was the most surprising thing about getting into porn professionally? The other performers, honestly. Like, I I really thought it was going to be like a caddy, um, you know. I mean, I don't know why I thought this. I mean, I think... Cause I guess I projected my fear onto it. It's like, Oh, is it going to be competitive caddy like this and that? And it's honestly like, I consider all these people, my friends and like so many of them show up for me, like friends and like, we all chit chat and the crew is so, I mean, everybody's just so cool. It's like a, it's like a work environment, like anything else. 
but for some reason there's like an added amount of camaraderie um between everybody were you nervous at all your first day on set oh my god i was horrified <laughs> absolutely <laughs> abs absolutely horrified i i woke up at 5 30 in the morning to start prepping um to start you know and then got there and i was just like hi like where's the body oil you know like the the first thing you do is stills with trent ducati so there's trent ducati like one of the hottest men in the world taking pictures of you naked and you're like oh my god yeah it's a lot <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think that I realized that the stills were the first thing because I can't imagine anything more boner shrinking than standing and posing while someone takes photos and then going to perform. Okay, it goes stills, B-roll, then sex. That's, well, I <laughs> that's would be exhausted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... So yeah, that's that's the first thing. But but Trenton's so cool. The whole time he'll take your picture, he's just like, "Oh, you're gorgeous. You're perfect. You're a superstar." So he like really hypes you up, actually, which is incredible. Well, and imagine what it was like doing that before Tyra Banks taught us all how to be top models. Right, right. I hear that in my head the whole time. The, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we all know about smizing. We all know to bevel. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's, I mean, we, Tyra Banks does not get enough credit for teaching America. I think that she is the reason Instagram really took off because now people yeah. know how to take a good photo. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Tyra Banks, internet hero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that you've become known for is being a super hunky muscle bottom mm -hmm. in gay porn. Uh, so I have to ask, after a day of starving yourself to do a shoot, mm -hmm. what is your go-to after-shoot meal? Well, what do I want to eat or what do I eat? <laughs> what do you eat? I don't want to hear about whatever fantasy makes you relatable. <laughs> I want to hear about the sad <laughs> kale and chicken breast that you actually allow yourself. There it is. I get a, well, I always have on, <laughs> on deck somewhere uh, pistachios. So I'll just like, just chug pistachios, just absolutely the already shelled ones, just chug those down. And then, yeah, like probably a, a workout smoothie or like some sort of a, a kale salad. Yeah. But what do you want? I'll, I'll give it to you. What do you want? What do, I, what do I want? I want pad thai. I want cheesecake. I want... <laughs> Together? <laughs> together at the same time cheesecake first you name it it's just it's a fantasy i never get it so <laughs> <laughs> i find this fantasy <laughs> very um it works as a nice appetizers uh, appetite suppressant for me imagining pad thai <laughs> preceded by or followed by cheesecake there's something about yeah. that combo that just is not working for me so thank you for that yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, so as an exclusive, what what does that entail now in 2021? So that entails, um, it's pretty much just like a an agreement that, you know, hey, you get this amount of scenes this year. Um, you know, we're, they so graciously promote us, which is awesome, especially like in the age of OnlyFans, you know, um, to have yeah. other people promoting you, not just you promoting you. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And yeah, that's really what it is. Um, it's just not even necessarily like it's an agreement that, hey, we're having X amount of productions this year. What's cool about Falcon is it's like, a bunch of different um, brands all under the Falcon umbrella. So I'll do raging. Sometimes I'll do an actual Falcon movie, but more so like raging. I just did um, a fetish force, um, mostly raging. What else did I do? Yeah, they have a bunch of stuff. They have like um, fisting, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't remember. You film it, you forget it. 
yeah. It's mostly Raging Stallion. And then, um, and then yeah, a, a few, I have a Falcon one coming out, too, where I, I play an OnlyFans content creator. So that's fun. Well. Yeah. That must have been a stretch. <laughs> it was difficult. It was hard. Yeah. But speaking of OnlyFans, what, what can fans who subscribe expect from your OnlyFans? What kind of content are you delivering them? I deliver... I, I don't do that pay-per-view. Well, I don't want to shit on anything. I, I don't do pay-per-view. Um, I just don't. It's like a, an, an extra step that I feel like would kind of stress me out. So twice a week, you'll get a video of me having sex. If it's a long video, it'll be split into two. Um, anytime I do a photo shoot, which is probably once a week to maybe three times a month um, at least, You'll get all the nudes from that photo shoot just sort of dropped. So it's two to three posts a week. Um, always sex. There's always some sort of a sex scene I, uh, with really hot guys. Um, this week, I'm premiering my bareback birthday where I set up. Yeah, yeah. I set up three different groups on my birthday with a, like 30 minutes apart from each other, filmed it all, and I'm going to put it out in three parts this week. Uh, now, after that birthday yeah. uh, extravaganza, what did you eat? Well, this is so my my sister and my grandmother and my best friend all came over and we ate cheesecake and watched Gone with the Wind. So, see, you... <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's that. You know. A four hour long sitting on my ass watching a four hour long movie might not yeah. be my choice after a couple of gangbangs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but good for you for following yeah, through. I followed through. So is I, that is that where Bo Butler comes from? Is it actually a Gone with the Wind homage? It is a, it is a Gone with the Wind homage. My, um, it's a, a, a family tradition to use that last name. It was a last name chosen by a family member of mine when they moved to LA in the fifties to be an actor. It was their fake last name. So yeah. I thought you were about to say it's our family porn name. We've it's all done we've come from name. a long line. <laughs> well, my grandma was a, a go-go dancer at the whiskey for years and years and years. So I do kind of come what? from a long line of, of of a long line of us. So yeah. <laughs> Have you did you go go at all before getting into porn? No, I I just sort of jumped head first. I, didn't, I hadn't really dabbled with any of it. And look at you now. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's a good time. You're I'm bent about... over everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere except uh, for the UK. That's next. Uh, well, you have to have goals still. You can't peak at 31. I know. <laughs> when do you have rhythm? Like are when things open up again, will you go and like go go at bars in LA? I'm actually going to be go go dancing this Friday at Rocco's in West Hollywood. But it's more of like an outdoor shower situation. So I'll just kind of be like under, like, you know what I mean? It's like, a less, it's like less of like a go go situation, more of like a look how wet, you know? So it's. So you, you're just doing like the waterfall photo shoot for Top Model this week. Yeah. But for four hours, I'll be doing the waterfall photo shoot. Wow. You were going to get so pruney. I know. I know. I don't even know. I don't know if the water is going to be warm. I don't know what the situation is. I just say yes to things, which is why I'm everywhere. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you have to show up early and do like a dry <laughs> run, so to speak, to see yeah. what the water is like, what the water pressure is like. Okay. Geez, does your hair look good wet? Have you thought about all of this? Right. Well, the other thing is hit me was how the fuck are people going to tip? Are they going to throw money into the water and then do I fish for it? Like, there's a lot of questions. So, you know what? My... <laughs> Just, you need to like take, get a laminated sign with your Venmo <laughs> yeah. and just tape that somewhere. So smart. So smart. That's a you great know, idea. 
I was going to say write it in Steam, but then you're going to have to keep doing that over and over again. <laughs> and you're going to be so focused on like abs, hair, like yeah. face. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be too much. Hopefully I don't look like a wet cat or like some, like, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. This is the trial run of my, my go-go career. <laughs> I hope that it's not over before it truly begins, though. I really do. <laughs> Uh, all right. That is all the time that we have. Thank you so much. Uh, I will say, frankly, Bo, I do give a damn about you and your career. Oh. You've made me care. Yay. I care about you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know why I just turned into Alexis, but oh. it's fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I cannot wait to find out how you do as a wet cat in a shower. In oh, front of strangers. You better be there. Uh, I'm not, but I will send spies to live stream it for me. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Thank uh, you so much get, for, um, for asking me to do this. Honestly, thank you so much. It was super fun. I appreciate you being interested. It's great. Oh, well, you're supposed to save the compliments for after because now everyone thinks that I paid you with your Venmo, but um, <laughs> I, I did. Uh, and guys, if you go to Rocco's, uh, if you go to Rocco's and see Bo, just remember, it's just like a wishing fountain, throw <laughs> coins at him and make a wish. <laughs> if it leaves a mark, it'll come true. <laughs>